الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر امور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد الحمد لله على نعمه الاسلام والسنه الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه ان شاء الله تعالى we would like to change up a little bit and look into some of the rules and regulations that are surrounding fasting and look at some benefits of fasting and the uh, ruling on fasting the month of Ramadan and related topics inshallah ta'ala and this is in preparation for Ramadan so it's good that we take this time or we take some time out in these next few days inshallah ta'ala uh when we are back at our homes and the like to go over and to read some subject matters and some materials that go over and deal with the ahkam the rules and regulations with regards to fasting so we refresh ourselves with Allah Ta'ala with regards to the rules and the regulations of fasting. Waqala Fadilatu Shaykh Al-Allama Shaykh Saleh Al-Fawzan in a tremendous book Mulakhis Al-Fiqhi He says Bab Fi Wujub Al-Sawm Ramadan He says Chapter The Obligation of Fasting Ramadan Wa Waqt And The time frame of Ramadan and what time it falls into. The Shaykh says, So much after Ramadan, Rukun min Arkan al Islam, that fasting the month of Ramadan, it is a pillar from the pillars of Islam. And it is an obligation from Allah's obligations. Ma'lumun min deen bit durura. And it is well known from the deen bit durura. Bit durura yani meaning that it is from those affairs that are well known by the deen and everybody has to know. It's from those affairs that is not acceptable that a Muslim be ignorant about them. Now, like when it comes, for example, zakat, so on and so forth. It's not acceptable that a Muslim will come and say, for example, I never heard nothing called zakat. I don't know what zakat is. But every Muslim has to know about zakat. Every Muslim has to know about hajj, for example. So to be a Muslim and they don't know about hajj is not acceptable. So these things, when it says you have to know, but these are those things that every single Muslim man and woman has to know, and there's no exception, there's no excuse. There's no excuse. Every Muslim has to know about Ramadan, like the other pillars of Islam, like the articles of uh, Iman, so on and so forth. Now, the Shaykh says, يَدُلُّ عَلَيْهِ الْكِتَابُ وَالسُنَّةُ وَالْإِجْمَاعَ that that which points to the fact that fasting the month of Ramadan is from the deen of Al-Islam it is the book meaning the Quran the Sunnah and Al-Ijma' and the consensus of the ulama so from the Quran what points us to the fact that fasting 
Ramadan is a part of Islam. As Allah Ta'ala statement in Surah Al-Baqarah and it's verse 183, wherein Allah Ta'ala He says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum al-siyam kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattafoon that all you who believe it has been written upon you fasting as it was written upon those who came before you so that perhaps you will attain piety. Until ila qawlihi ta'ala, until his statement, the most high statement, shah Ramadan al-ladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an hudan lil-nas wa bayinatin min al-huda wal-furqan faman shahida minkum al-shahra fal-yasum Allah Ta'ala's statement, the month of Ramadan, wherein the Qur'an has been revealed, a guidance for mankind, and that which is clear, uh, and uh, that which is clear in the clarification and the explanation of the guidance, and a criterion, a criterion by way in which man they will know the good from the evil, uh, so on and so forth. So whoever from amongst you witnesses the month, then it is binding upon him to fast it. Ma'am? And this here, is an indication which points us to the obligation. This is a command here. Now, Allah Ta'ala says, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَسُمْهُ That whoever from amongst you sees the month, then he has to fast it. فَلْيَسُمْهُ Now, then he has to fast it. It's a command. So whoever from amongst you sees the month, he must fast it. Now, likewise we find in the previous mentioned verse, as we said this was verse 185 from Surah Al-Baqarah, also in the previously mentioned verse, that is verse 183, where Allah Ta'ala, He says, Kutiba, uh, that it has been written. And ma'ana kutiba, kama qala al-fadilat al-shaykh al-alama shaykh Salih al-Fuzan, wa kathalika qalahu al-mufassirun wal-ulama. Ma'ana a furida, meaning that it has been made obligatory upon you. Kutiba a furida. Written upon you, meaning obligatory upon you. So therefore, it is obligatory. So someone comes and he says, okay, what is the proof now that not just fasting Ramadan is from the deen of Al-Islam, but what is the proof that it is obligatory to fast a month of Ramadan? Then we'll point him and direct him to these two ayat. Kutiba a furiba, that it is obligatory. And Allah said, a statement from Shahida Minkum Shahra Fal Yasum, and whoever from amongst you sees the month, meaning the month of Ramadan, then let him fast it. Then he must fast it. Well Amr Lil Wujub. This command here is for obligation that we have to fast the month of Ramadan. Also from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as a Shaykh member he said, is from the we know fasting Ramadan is from the Deen, from the Kitab. We went over some ayat. Now from the sunnah. He said also from the sunnah and, and al-ijma'ah. Well from the sunnah is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he says, Buni al-Islam ala khams. Wa minha sawm Ramadan. That Islam is built upon five. And then he mentions therein fasting the month of Ramadan. So this is one of those five, one of those five pillars of Al-Islam. And we know this from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma fi ma rawahu al-Bukhari wa Muslim fi sahihima hadith mutafakun alayhi wa ahadith dalala ala faridatihi wa fadlihi kathira mashura and those ahadith which point to its obligation and point to its superiority then they are many. There are many, many narrations which point to the superiority and point to the obligation of fasting the month of Ramadan. وَإِجْمَاعَ muslimun And then also from the ijma' of the Muslims. وَإِجْتَمَعَ muslimun عَلَىٰ وُجُوبِ الصَّوْمِ And the Muslims have a consensus on the obligation of fasting it. Fasting meaning Ramadan. وَأَنَّمَا أَنْكَرَهُ كَفَرًا and that whoever denies it, whoever rejects it, then he would have disbelieved. Now, like the, any of the five pillars of Islam, whoever denies it, saying, for example, there's no such thing as Hajj. There's no Hajj in Islam, we don't believe in Hajj. Then, of course, that person won't be a Muslim. Whoever says, for example, there's no such thing as Salah. Muslim, he don't have to pray, no such thing as Salah in Islam. 
and likewise that will be kufr. So if a person comes now and he says, there's no such thing as fasting in Ramadan, what's the ruling on that? We would say that this is what? Kufr. Tayyip. What if a person comes and he says, okay, I believe in Ramadan, but I don't believe it's obligatory to fast from Ramadan. It's just better that you fast. It's recommended that you fast, but it's not obligatory that you fast. It's kufr. Still the same, same thing. Still kufr. Now, why? Because they will be denying those clear texts and evidences from the Quran and from the Sunnah, wherein not only confirm that fasting in Ramadan is from Islam, but also affirm and confirm that it is wajib to fast the month of Ramadan. It is wajib to fast the month of Ramadan. And the Muslims have all unanimously agreed upon this. The Shaykh, he says, Wa hikmah fi shir'iyat al siyam and the wisdom and the obligation or legislating or legislation of fasting, there are many, many, many benefits from them. وَأَنَّ فِيهِ تَسْكِيَ الْنَفْسِ وَتَطْهِيرًا وَتَقِيَّةً لَهَا مِنَ الْأَخْلَاقِ الرَّدِيَّةِ وَمِنَ الْأَخْلَاقِ أَفْوَنَ الْأَخْلَاقِ الرَّدِيَّةِ وَالْأَخْلَاقِ الرَّذِيلَةِ That there is inside of the fasting of Ramadan a purification of the soul. A purification of the soul. A purification of the soul and a cleansing for يعني, the soul and for the body from the mixing of lowly things for that lowly things are mixed with it and also from uh, cleansing the soul from lowly and despicable characteristics and mannerisms now, that fasting is something that is tremendous so from this, from this standpoint it helps to purify the soul it helps to cleanse the soul, to clean the soul. It helps in, in the shaping and molding of a person's character, the shaping and the molding of good character. It helps from so many added, so many, so many benefits uh, that it has for cleansing and, and purifying the soul. And we get this from fasting. Man. And you find that fasting, as the ulama they mentioned, that you'll find that in fasting, fasting it is that which will, it will sever the servitude of the slave for anything except Allah Ta'ala. Naam. He says because when it comes to the matters of the dunya, if you find yourself perpetually always engaging in them, you will find that the servant will actually become a slave to these things. They'll become a slave to their desires, a slave to eating and to drinking and to following after their desires and their whims and their wants and their cravings and so on and so forth. There's a perpetuation of it and it never stops. In a situation like that, the slave is, is subjected now to becoming a slave to what? A slave to these vices, a slave to these things. Whereas when you discontinue that, teaching the soul that it, that, 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 that it doesn't have to yani, uh, cater to these desires to that extent, showing that it has some independence away from these desires and the control over these desires, that it is something that actually would by way of it will allow the slave to yani, break free of the servitude to these things and break free from the servitude of desires and so on and so forth. So therein there is a great training for the individual, a great training for the slave uh, so that he would never be a slave to the likes of these things. Why? Because he's training himself and showing himself how to properly deal and act with these things. And from that, which will help us into doing that, is what is fasting. It's fasting. It helps us to break that, uh, to break that uh, servitude to these created things. Now, and this is why you find that the fasting is something that is tremendous. The fasting is something that is tremendous, and the fasting, because of its tremendous nature, it is that which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He has written upon every nation of believers. And the proof of that is in Allah Taala's statement: Ya ayyuhaladina amanu. كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامِ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْرِكُمْ O you who believe has been written upon you fasting as it was written upon those who came before you. As it was written upon those who came before you. So you find that there was never a community of believers except that they were in need of fasting. They were in need of fasting. Which shows you the yani, uh, 
the, the superiority of this act of worship or fasting uh, sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, you'll find that it's a purification of the soul and it, it, it helps us to cleanse our, 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 our soul from these lowly and despicable things and the like. And the Shaykh, he says, the أَنَّهُ يُضِيقُ مَجَارِيَ الشَّيْطَانِ فِي بَرِنِ insan. He says, because you find that it restricts the past, the pathways of shaytan fi badnil insan inside of the body of the human. The anna shaytan yajri min ibn Adam majri dam because the shaytan he runs through the human being by way of the veins, by way of the veins majri dam by way of the veins it runs through the human being. So you find it restricting for the passage ways of the shaytan in which he runs through. The human beings. Now, the end of Shaytan, uh, the Shaykh he says, now he, he 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 runs through the vascular system of the uh, the vascular system of the human. Now, فَإِذَا أَكِلَ أَوْ شَرِيبَ إِسْتَنْبَطْ نَفْسَهُ. So when he eats and he drinks, now that you will find إِسْتَنْبَطْ نَفْسَهُ لِلشَّهْوَاتِ. Then he will be subjecting his his self to desires. He'll be strengthening the desires. Now, the more individual he eats and he drinks, now he becomes more stronger to do these lowly uh, acts and so on and so forth. Now, what da'afat iradatu, and you find that the its its uh, its want and its desire for good things becomes broken, becomes weakened, becomes weakened. Now. وَقِلَّتْ رَقْبَتُ And you find that its desire becomes less for ibadat, becomes less for worship. Now, let me know this is the case. When an individual is oversatiated, what happens is that their level of energy, when it comes to doing things, is decreased. They become sluggish, they become lethargic, they become lazy. Now, they lose their drive to go that extra mile in, in worship and ibadah. Why? Because they are they are full. They become oversatiated, and so on and so forth. And this is one of the problems when it comes to excessive eating and drinking. And not just that, but also it will strengthen the soul to do want to do things it shouldn't be doing, and so on and so forth. Whereas with the fasting, the fasting produces the opposite of that, because it breaks the soul, and it's and it, and it, and it teaches and it trains the soul to have restraints. It teaches and it trains the soul to have self-control and so on and so forth. So the Shaykh, he says, well, so more the acts in that. And fasting, it produces the opposite of that. And also inside of fasting, you find uh, abstainment from the dunya and from the desires. And also a longing and a hope and desiring for the hereafter. A hope and desire for the hereafter. Now, because the abd, when he fasts, he fasts out of iman and out of seeking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as it comes in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, where he said, Man sama Ramadan iman and wahti saban, wufra lahu ma tuqadda min dhambih, that whoever fasts Ramadan out of iman, wahti saban, out of iman and anticipating the reward. And anticipating the reward, then he is forgiven his previous sins. Now, so when a person he fasts, by the act of fasting, he's what? Is he looking for a benefit or a reward right now? Immediate gratification? No. But rather he's looking what? He's anticipating his reward in the akhirah. He's anticipating his reward in the akhirah. So by that, it, 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 it breaks the focus that an individual may have, because he may get caught up, but just looking at dunya, dunya, dunya. But by way of it, the nature of fasting is that it will remind an individual of the akhirah. It will remind an individual that this is not the only abode. There's something after this, and that's what's really important. So it would it would change his focus and help him to refocus or and or to stay focused upon the akhirah. Now, so you find that it will make him what be one who can abstain from the dunya and abstain from the desires. Uh, and the vices in the dunya, and it will give him 
a, 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 a rejuvenize, uh, you would say, longing and hope and desire for the akhirah. وَفِيهِ بَعْدْ عَلَى الْعَطْفِ عَلَى الْمَسَاكِينَ And also you have in it, a, it will conjure up kind, kind to individual to be kind and to be gentle with the poor people. Naam. And this is because وَإِحْسَاسٍ بِأَلَامِهِمْ Because he would sense their pain. He won't just know it in theory, but he would know it. He would know it practically. He would have experienced it. So he would be, he would be able to relate to them better now because he knows their pain, literally. Figuratively and literally, he knows their pain. لِمَا يَذُقَّهُ الصَّائِمْ مِنَ الْأَلَمِ الْجُورَ وَالْعَطُشْ Because of that, which the fasting person will experience and taste from the pains of hunger and the pains of thirst. Naam. So therefore, because he experienced these pains of hunger and these pains of thirst, because he knows that there are individuals who go through this, and this is their state, this is their general state, is that they are suffering from hunger, suffering from thirst, and they don't have access to what he has access to, and so on and so forth, uh, then this would encourage an individual. This would... Uh, move an individual to be nice and to be easy and gentle with the poor people and to spend upon them uh, and to feed them and so on and so forth. Naam. And this is something that is tremendous. It's a tremendously social uh, benefit that the society will benefit from as an encouragement for the rich of the society to spend and to give to the poor. The Sheikh, he says, وَصَوْمْ فِي الشَّرَعِ And fasting inside of the legislation هُوَ إِمْسَاكْ بِنِيًّا عَنِ الْأَشَاءِ الْمَخْصُوصَةِ It is to withhold from something or to withhold from specific things with an intention. To intentionally withhold from specific things. مَنْ أَكِلْ وَشَرْبْ وَجَمَاعَ وَغِيْرِ ذَلِكَ مِمَّا وَرَدْ بِهِ الشَّرَعِ to, to يعني, staying away from eating, drinking, intercourse, and other than that, that has been, uh, uh, what do you say, that has come يعني, in, the, in, in, in the legislation. Ma'am? Ma'am? The Shaykh says, وَيَتَبِعُ ذَلِكَ الْإِمْسَاكُ عَلَى الرَّفْ وَالْفُسُوقِ And also, that is followed up by also withholding from a rough wal fusuk. Not just staying away from eating and drinking, not just staying away from intercourse and the like, but also in preventing oneself from lewd and indecent behavior. Also he restricts himself from lewd and indecent behavior from bad behavior and so on and so forth. So you you will find that for an individual, not just that he's yani, fasting, but also it is a reminder for him and it, and, and it enhances his uh, stance when it comes to staying away from haram things. So you wouldn't find a person that's fasting, staying away from food and drink, but then indulging in haram things. But rather he'll be staying away from the food and the drink and the intercourse and so on and so forth and from those haram things. So you'll find he will have a heightened sense of staying away from lying, staying away from cheating, staying away from yeah, any, you know, injustice and oppression and so on and so forth. Now, backbiting, slander, and the like. You will find that he will have a heightened in, 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 in a sense of staying away from the likes of these things while he is fasting as well. So it's a training ground to not just to, to, to yeah, a breaking of the desires and so on and so forth, but also showing and strengthening the soul to stay away from those haram things. Strengthening the soul to stay away from those things, uh, from bad behavior and from sins and so on and so forth. So it strengthens the soul in this resolve to stay away from the haram while breaking the desires so that they don't overindulge and the desires which will lead to the haram as well. Now, and the Shaykh he says, يعني, and the, and the obligation of fasting, it begins actually from the second Fajr, from the second and actual Fajr. And it is that white that comes in the horizon. 
and the, and the day of fasting it will end with the setting of the sun. So the day of fasting, it begins with Fajr time. That's when you have to begin the fast. And the day of fasting ends with the setting uh, of the sun or at Maghrib time. At Maghrib time. Naam. And what is the proof of this? Allah Ta'ala he says, Allah Ta'ala he says, and, and from now, then you can touch them. Yani Zawjat. Zawjat. Now, now you can touch them, meaning the wives. The wives. Now. Allah Ta'ala goes on and he says, And you may seek after that which Allah has written for you. وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا And eat and drink. And eat and drink. Ma'am. حَتَّى يَتَبَيِّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطُ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجَرُ Until, eat and drink until the, 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 it has been made clear to you the white thread from the black thread of Fajr. Or until the, the white thread of day is made distinct from the black thread of night, yani at the time of Fajr. Ma'am. ثم أتم الصيام إلى الليل. Then complete your fast until the night. So this ayah right here in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 187, it shows us exactly when the day, the the, the, fa- the day of fasting begins. The day of fasting begins at the time of Fajr, as Allah Taala He says, "Kulu wa shrabu," meaning what? In the night time. It's night time, right? "Kulu wa shrabu." Until eat and drink until the white thread of day is made distinct from the black thread of night at the time of Fajr. Now, at the time of Fajr, Allah Ta'ala he says, Now that it's Fajr, now you stop and you continue your fast until the night time. Now you continue your fast until the night time. So we see now from this ayah that what? That once the Fajr comes, we fast until the night time. When night time comes, Maghrib, now we could break the fast. So this ayah is a proof and it shows us when the day of fasting begins and when the day of fasting will end. وَيَبْدَأُ وُجُوبُ صَوْمُ الشَّهْرِ رَمَضَانِ إِذَا عَلِمَ دُخُولِهِ Now we spoke about when, the, the, when does fasting begin daily. So once Ramadan has come, now when does the daily fast begin? It begins at the time of Fajr and it concludes when? At Maghrib. Now, but what about the month itself? How do we know when the month comes? Now, this is very important. Every year, every year, you always have some ikhtilaf uh, here in the West, at least. Yeah, in the lines of the Muslims, you don't have a problem. You know, the country all fast at the same time. It's about, you know, that's how it works in the land of Muslims. The country all fast at the same time. They all break fast at the same time. It's easy. Here, not so much. This one is fasting, this master fasting, that master eating. This master is having to eat, that master is fasting. Allah was saying, ma'am, there are three ways that we know when the month of Ramadan comes according to the Sharia. Three ways. And you will find that the discrepancy it comes when the Muslims go away from these three ways. That's, that's how we get this ikhtilafat. Because they want to bring another way. A fourth, a fifth, and a sixth way, and there's only three, and they want to bring more. Now, I mean, this is where you find differing. Whereas, if we would take it back, excuse me, we would take it back to the Sharia, take it back to the Kitab and the Sunnah, we wouldn't have these problems. We wouldn't have these problems. Now, and our solution and, and, and the remedy for these problems, it lies in, in taking it back to the Kitab and to the Sunnah. So, the Shaykh, he says that the first way, al tariqa al ula here, Ru'ya, ma'am, Ru'ya, al-Hilal. The first way is to see the moon. Right? That you see the moon. Allah Ta'ala says, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلِيَسُمْ Whoever for amongst you sees it, then he has to fast. Ma'am, whoever for amongst you sees it, then he has to fast. وَقَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ عَيْسَلَّمْ And we already mentioned where this ayah is, is found. وَقَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ عَيْسَلَّمْ نَعَمْ فِي الْحَدِيثِ مُتَفَقُونَ عَلَيْهِ سُومُ the ru'yati, fast when you see it. When you see it, fast. Naam. So the Prophet let me explain this in the hadith is mutafakun alayh. That when you see it, fast. فَمَنْ رَأَ الْحِلَالِ بِنَفْسِهِ وَجَبَ عَلَيْهِ So whoever sees the crescent with his eye, then he has to fast. He has to fast. Naam. 
So the first way now, until we know the month comes in, is to what? See it. See it. Now, a lot of times, people will get caught up on this one. Acting like there's no other, no other way to identify when the month of Ramadan comes in. Saying, no brother, but you have to see it. Now, you have to see it. I've even had individuals tell me, no, 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 but we got to see it ourselves. If we don't see it ourselves, then we can't fast, we can't break the but we got to see it ourselves. And then you follow that question up by saying, okay, well, do you, do you, are you able to determine the new moon? Like, do you know how to find a new moon? No. Have you ever seen a new moon in your life? No. Yeah, Salam. So how are you going to see it? How are you going to find it? You know what you're looking for? Do you know what a new moon looks like? No. So then... What he's talking about? That becomes a natural question, right? So what are you talking about? So of course you see the new moon. What if you have the ability to do so? If you have the ability to do so, then that's something different. Then not go look for it and like that. You see? But a lot of times the case is that is that maybe because of where the person may live at, there may be too much light pollution, whatever, whatever, whatever. So many reasons, high buildings, so on and so forth. Maybe tall mountains, whatever. They can't see it. They don't have the ability to see it, right? Or they're not trained and skilled in seeing and so on and so forth. So, what is it now? We don't fast because we can never find what Ramadan is? No, there are other ways. What are some of those other ways? The Shaykh says, وَتُرِقَ الثَّانِيَةِ And the second way is الشَّهَادَةِ الشَّهَادَةِ عَلَى الرُّيَةِ Is that someone else informs you that they saw the moon. Someone else informs you they saw the moon. Naam. The Shaykh says, أَوْ إِخْبَارْ عَنْهَا Or you get informed that somebody witnessed the moon. Or you get informed about it. Because it's not necessarily maybe the person who saw it may not tell you. You know what I mean? They may not come and say, hey, I saw the moon. So he may not tell you directly, but you may be informed that the moon was sighted. You may be informed that the moon was sighted. Now, so if this were to happen, then, alhamdulillah, then we fast. So the siyam of the one who is... Yani just Adil, Naam, Mukallaf, one who has reached the age of uh, responsibility and so on and so forth. Then it's enough for us, Yani, to take his his word for this. And the Shaykh, he says, uh, ibn Umar, anhu, with this, because of the statement of Ibn Umar, anhu, where he mentions that some people have saw the Hilal and they informed the Prophet وسلم, about that. Uh, so with that, the Prophet ﷺ, he commanded the people uh, to pray. I mean, to fast, rather. He commanded the people to fast. So they fasted according to the ru'ya. And it comes narrations in the sunnah like this uh, that back up this particular text uh, and the like. So the second way is that we're informed. We're informed that the moon was seen. The second way. The third way, because you have some times where you may be in a location, in, in a locale, where uh, you're not able to see the moon. You're not able to see the new moon. The Shaykh he says, and the third way is Ikmal Shaban and this is to complete Shaban with 30 days. Because sometimes there may be certain conditions, atmospheric conditions and the like, that will prevent you from seeing the moon. So therefore, in those situations, in those cases, then you will calculate 30 days. And the Shaykh he says, ليلة الثلاثين من الشعبان ما عدم ما عدم الوجود ما يمنع الرؤية من الغم أو القطر أي نعم أو منع وجود الشيء من ذلك. He says and this is uh, when we calculate the shaykh he says uh, and that is when we don't see the hilal. But I want you to pay attention. To one the point the shaykh is the wording of what the shaykh actually says. He says, la yura al When the crescent is not seen, min Shaban. On the thirtieth night of Shaban. So when when we go to the calculation now method, is when we can't see the moon on the thirtieth night. On the thirtieth night. Not months before, not years before, and somebody bring a calculation. No. This type of calculation is not permissible to use. But it's only if the moon cannot be seen on the 30th night 
of Sha'ban. Then at that point. And the Shaykh says, Ma Adam al Wujud, Ma Yamna al Ru'ya. Naam. And this is yani, with that which is, uh, will prevent you from seeing the Hilal. Naam. Min Ghayyam, from heavy clouds, or Qatar, or a lot of rain. So it prevents you from seeing it, and the like of that. Naam. Liqawdi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this is in accordance to the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إنما شهر تسعة والعشرون يوما فلا تصوموا حتى تروا الحلال ولا تفطروا حتى تروا فإن غم عليكم فأقضروا له The Prophet ﷺ said Verily a month is either 29 or 30 days نعم إنما شهر تسعة والعشرون يوما and then we had an understand from another riwayah or 30 days of the Yoman. Now, so whoever on that 29th night uh, is not able to see it, as the Prophet is going to explain at the end of the hadith, al Qulin he says, so do not fast until you see it, meaning the new moon, and do not break the fast until you see it, meaning the new moon. <coughs> meaning on the 29th of Ramadan, if we don't see the new moon on that, tw- on, on that night, then what? Then we consider the next day to, oh, I'm sorry, on the 30th night, rather, not the 29th night, rather, but the 30th night of uh, Sha'ban, excuse me. If we don't see the moon, then we count Sha'ban as 30 days and we start Ramadan after completing Sha'ban 30 days. Likewise, on the 30th, or the, uh, now, nah, 30th night of Ramadan, if we don't see the moon, then tomorrow's not the eight. Then we fast, completing Ramadan, 30 days, and then we pray uh, the Eid after that, after completing Ramadan for 30 days. The Prophet said, he said, فَإِنْ غُمَّ عَلَيْكُمْ But if there's large, thick clouds, or overcast, overhead, so that you can't see it, right? You're prevented from seeing it. Then, at that point, then calculate it. The Shaykh, he says, meaning, أَتَمُّ شَهْرُ شَعْبَانَ ثَلَثِينَ يَوْمًا Meaning that you complete the month of Sha'ban by making it 30 days, or if it's a, in regards to fasting or yani the eat, then you complete Ramadan 30 days. So if you don't see the moon, then you complete the month 30 days. Now I'm 30 days. And this is because what? Because as a reminder, this person may say, well, listen, how, if, we, if, if it's a 30th night, then how are we going to fast the next day? And 31? No. Because the nighttime comes before the daytime. Right? Like with Ramadan, we see the moon for Ramadan. That night, we pray Taraweeh. But we didn't fast yet. How could we? It's still nighttime. And not the daytime yet. We pray Taraweeh. And then what? Then we fast. So that shows you that the night comes before the day. Now, so the 30th night precedes the 30th day. So the 30th night, then the 30th day. So on the 30th night, we saw yani the moon, then khalas. Tomorrow we fast, and that month was 29 days. 29 days, not night, 29 days. Right? And so on and so forth. We don't see it, then that month was 30 days. 30 days. Now. And the the sheikh, he goes on to explain those who the fasting is uh, obligatory upon. لكن إن شاء الله تعالى أتوقف ها هنا لأننا لا نريد أن نطيل في الكلام فنكتفي بهذا القدر وصلى الله وسلم على أمير محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين